I'm in one of those seasons where a lot of my speeches are of heaven. Heavenly unction. Okay. That's hard for a lot of people to understand, but I understand a lot of believers, a lot of Christians ain't heard or even don't even have a clue what I'm saying. But what I was saying earlier is that like what I was saying about you know who. You know, if something ever happens to me where you keep re preaching the gospel, he said. Because he saw something in the spirit. He saw something. He knew he wasn't going to be around to preach the gospel. So, but a lot of people are preaching, but they're not serving God. They're not even walking with God anymore. They're living like the world. They're not even, you know, they're preaching false doctrine. They're preaching whatever it is that their pastor is telling them or whatever it is that pleases the people. But it's the way he said it. Mm -hmm. Will you preach the gospel? Yeah. Will you preach the gospel? The gospel he's talking about is the gospel that we was living, that we've been living during that time. It's still the same gospel I believe I'm living now. The gospel that bears about the death of the Lord Jesus Christ in the body. What does that mean? That you resist temptation like Christ resisted temptation. That you put on the new man as Christ wore the new man. As he was the new man. Do you understand what I'm saying? He was the only one on earth that can really wear that new man. Because he was sinless. Because every time you sin or get in the flesh... Every time you sin and get in the flesh, it taps you out of the presence of God, out of the armor of God. The, the armor of God, the presence of God is the armor of God. Okay? It taps you out of that. It strips you of it. And you're on a probation period where you have to get under the blood and tap back in. Okay? It takes a while to get back in the spirit. There's a, there, there's a little fiery trial there to get back in the spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the, the reason why I'm saying this is very important, okay, is that because Jesus never sinned, he was always able to be in the spirit. And because he took upon death on the cross, see the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Because Adam and Eve ate, ate of the forbidden tree, sin had the authority to come in and bring death. Because he never, because Jesus never sinned and he experienced death without sinning it undid the curse his blood was able to atone for the sins of the world do you understand what i'm saying so what i'm trying to get you to focus on and get you to think about with me is that is that Because of Jesus sinning, when we sin and make a mistake, we can plead the blood and tap back into that veil of his presence, whereas before you couldn't do it. You have to wait once a year for the high priest to come and sacrifice an animal that only covered the sin but not removed the sin. And because Jesus don't not only covers the sin but removes the sin, it it opens us completely to the veil before it was somewhat torn, somewhat open, somewhat because the presence of God rested upon them because of his sovereignty in the Old Testament. But that's not even what I'm trying to talk about, so forget about all that. I bunny trailed. My point is this. The gospel of dying like Christ died, crucifying the flesh, killing the flesh, that is a lifetime of learning how to do that. It was 30 years before Jesus could preach the gospel. We know because of Levitical laws, but there's other reasons for that too that add up to that law. But my point is that will you keep preaching the gospel? And Christ said to me, do only what you know to do. Do what you know to do. You know how to get in the spirit and preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Vinny, you know how to get in the spirit and preach under the anointing of my presence. Not many people know how to do what you know how to do. 
well, anyone can preach from the head and preach, preach and sound good and have the gift of preaching. No, 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 no. Not everyone, everyone can do that with the gift of preaching, but not everyone knows how to do it in the spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do what you know how to do. How do I know how to do what I do? Well, not only do I know how to preach in the spirit with the gift, but how do I get in the spirit and preach like that? Do you see what I'm saying? You got to live holy. You got to have everything on the altar every day. You got to have everything in the confession room. Everything. There is no wisdom. There is no counsel that is hidden from God. So confess everything. I'm not saying purposely live like a sinner every day. I'll be having some struggles from time to time, you know. You know, trying to stay right, trying to stay holy, trying to, as cleaner I stay, the more I get hit with these cursing spirits who want to say things I shouldn't be saying. There is a sanctification process that when you say, I am going to live holy, when you not be this single mind of Christian, oh, I know who I am in Christ, or I believe, I believe, you know, in Jesus Christ, I know who my Savior is. There are principles of knowing God to deal with crucifying the flesh to bring more of him in. See, the idea of the, of the cross is to crucify, kill the flesh. That is to remove you from the throne of your heart and put him on your heart. You see what I'm saying? He will actually come in and dwell there and, and, and be there as if he was there physically. See, that's the gospel I'm supposed to be preaching. Do what you know to do. If I'm not living it, I can't preach it. You see what I'm saying? So there's only one command. Do what you know to do. See, I can't... We could either preach Christ or preach about Christ. When you preach Christ, you are wearing Christ. Christ is the one speaking in you and through you. You are ushering in his presence when you speak. There's an anointing when you talk. They can feel something in the atmosphere when they listen to your words. There's a quickness where everything in the mind has to stop so they can tune in and listen. And sometimes it's hard because the mind wants to keep going. I know it's hard. Sometimes I sit there and I wrestle with myself so I just stop thinking and be still mentally so I can hear something from the cuff of heaven. But I'm in a season right now to where I've been feeling the presence come on me more. The gift of without repentance. The gift of preaching and the gift of the Holy Spirit without repentance. I've been doing these videos more. You know I've been getting more downloads because I've been preaching. I kind of kind of sat back from doing it. But since I've been preaching more on YouTube, there's been more downloads coming. His presence is stronger and fresher. He'll talk to me more. He'll visit me more. He don't really want to visit me or talk to me too much if I don't want to preach. Why? Because he told me to feed my sheep. And if I'm not feeding the sheep, I'm in disobedience to God and I'm in sin. And sin will keep you from his presence. So a lot of people that love to preach, I love to preach. No, if you are called by God and chosen on top of that calling, there's a difference to preach. There is something in you that does, there's something in you that comes out of the grave and says, I don't want to do this. I thought I wanted to, but I really don't. So at first we thought, we thought it was a limelight there. I know we love the Lord from the beginning, but we also like the limelight too. You know, we kind of we kind of want to be a little famous because other people are famous. When truth be told, they're famous because they're cute, or people think they're cute, or they look good. See, the truth is this: can't win for losing in this situation. Either I preach or I be a castaway. Cast away. Cast away. And if I preach, I have to really, really tighten up on my discipline or I'll become a castaway. Cast away. Cast away. Cast away. Cast away. 
Paul said, I beat my body in subjection after I have preached the gospel, lest least I'll be a castaway. What is he saying there? That there's a greater discipline that comes after preaching the gospel. If not, you'll be a castaway. Why? Because every time Paul preached the gospel, he knows a greater attack of the devil would come upon him every time he preached that would cause him to do things in his flesh he didn't want to do. So he had to beat his body in submission. See, that's talking about fasting. You see what I'm saying? To weaken the flesh so it's not so strong to overtake his urges. You see what I'm saying? Paul talked about having things in his flesh he didn't want to do, but he did. Do you see what I'm saying? His spirit didn't want to do it, but something else in the flesh wanted. He want his flesh wanted to do it, but his spirit didn't. If you go back, and I think that scripture's in Romans. The Romans are Hebrews, and I'm sorry, Romans are Corinthians. And it's so true. It's so true. I have to do the one thing I know to do. And that's keep his commandments. If you keep my commandments, me and my father make our abode with you. It's one commandment, but it's many commandments. You see what I'm saying? Preach the gospel. That means you have to live the gospel. That means you have to live holy, but you have to preach it. If you love me, feed my sheep, right? Well, why couldn't Jesus feed him? Why couldn't Jesus send him the Holy Ghost at the midnight hour when they're sleeping and the Holy Ghost preached to him? He needs... The Holy Ghost needs a body. He needs somebody to speak through. Otherwise, the angel that came to Cordelius would have just preached the gospel. He said, send, me, send, send some men to Joppa for a man, a man named Peter. I'm in that season. That the cleaner I stay, the more dedicated I am, the more disciplined I am, the more this atmosphere is going to hit me like this to where it rests upon me. And I've been feeling it the past couple of days where I'm wanting, this is the second time I've been grabbing this, the third time I've been grabbing this phone like this. To where I feel something on me and I have to get it out there because that's what I know. And as many times as I've heard it, there's a new revelation, there's a different revelation, there's a different way about it. There's a, there's a different way about the way I've said it that I didn't quite hear it from and didn't even know I said it. Do you understand what I'm saying? I go back and I listen to it and I say, wow, I said that? That's a person whose mind is trying to be in the spirit, trying to get something fresh, trying to sit at the throne of God, trying to, not someone sitting back, oh man, another sermon. Will you preach the gospel? Something happens to me. I used to think that he was like Enoch. He was so deep. Enoch was so deep in the spirit. The Bible says by faith he was translated. By faith he was translated. That means he had to believe God by faith that God would take him home. That means Enoch didn't want to be there anymore. Enoch wanted to go home now. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a dimension in God through prayer and seeking God that if you ever reach that dimension, he'll give you literally anything you want. If you want to go home, he will take you home. We know that because it happened with Paul. He said, I've completed the course. I finished the race. What are you talking about, Paul? You're still here preaching. And a few days later, climax of Alexander's chops his head off, and he's he's gone. So, Enoch, by faith, he was translated. I don't know why I brought that up. I'm trying to remember why I brought that up. I feel an anointing. After so many seasons of going through the battles and going through the motions, going through this, and you keep believing, no matter how many times you fail, sin, slip up, lose the battle with the enemy, say something in your flesh, you say, no matter how many times you do that and you keep getting back up, pretty soon a layer of the flesh is going to come off to where you're going to be past that and you're going to reach a level of perfection, a level of death, to where it's going to change you permanently. You see?
When God chooses a vessel to put his anointing in, he doesn't put it in it to be a lake, to sit there like a lake. A lake is still, <clears throat> not moving. He puts it in there to be a river, to flow out, to feed the sheep, to flow out, to multiply the lobes. To, you see what I'm saying? When he chooses to do that with the vessel and that vessel's cooperative, that vessel comes under a lot more tax when they're willing. When they're happy where they're at in the Lord and they're just happy being in three foot water and they're just happy and they're comfortable and they're laid back and they're they're just in they know them enough to go to heaven. They won't understand the other one that's trying to do the full commandment. Do you understand what I'm saying? They won't understand why the other one goes through so much more because he's got a greater anointing because it's flowing through him fully because he's willing to let it go and to preach. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's got more Gethsemanes because he's got a he's got more Gethsemanes. He's got to go through like Christ. Gethsemane means wine press to press to keep that oil constantly flowing. So he's going to see many demons coming for him to kill him to the cross. The devil's always putting him on a cross and blasting him up, trying to get him to come off that cross. And I'm being hammered. I'm being nailed. I'm being... I've seen so many so many people say, all right, devil, I had enough. I'm throwing in the towel. You can have what you want. Not me. For some reason, I'm stubborn. I keep getting up and I say, come on. Give it your best shot because I'm still believing in the one who sent me to call me to preach this gospel. I'm still going to fast and pray and talk in tongues and get a revelation. Remnant. I'm still believing for that remnant, even though I'm seeing more and more falling away from the faith. I don't care. He's all I've got. I've got a bigger target in my back because if I don't preach the gospel, I'll be a castaway and be a lukewarm Christian and think I'm a Christian because I have somewhat access to his presence and I kind of feel him and he's there uh, because he said he'll never leave me or forsake me. But I don't want to be deceived. I want to be filled with a fullness and a fullness is it's a river it's not it's it's not a lake it wants to it has to constantly flow and i want more of that the only way i i get more of that by giving out what i have remember elisha told a woman that have very little oil that if you give me what you have bake a cake for me you'll have enough for your son and before she knew it what she had multiplied the little boy had two loaves of fish and uh, two loaves of bread and some fish. But because he gave it, because the father, because Jesus gave thanks for what he had and gave it to the crowd, the father multiplied it. It's the same way. Those crowd was hungry. You see what I'm saying? They were hungry. There's people out there that we know not of. They're not in packs. They're not in packs by the millions. There's one, two, three here, one, three here, one, two, three there. Three or four in this church, five, six in that church, five, six in this village, four, six in this apartment complex, one or two, three here, and they're all on YouTube looking for Jesus. Or they're at some website or in church or in the streets looking for where he might be, looking to get an unction from the Spirit, listen to hear something that there might be hope that there might be somebody who's greater than the one that's in this world. Because let me tell you something. I've had the drugs, I've had the coke, crack, meth, I've had the heroin, I've had acid, I had uh, marijuana, alcohol, I've had, I've had everything that the world has to offer. And it's led me to the feet of Jesus. It's, it just didn't do it for me. It wasn't enough. Cars, money, I had it. It wasn't enough. I had t recently, formerly tasted something that was greater, and it did something to me. And when I began to lay it all down and seek him for 18 months straight, two years straight, I had got to a place where I had tasted too much of him, where there's no turning back. And I want more. Because there's death and sin and condemnation every time I look back. 
Every time I slip up, a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. A righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. I am persuaded, neither death or life, I, I, I'm persuaded that whatever comes my way cannot kill me, not even the devil, until I complete the assignment. As far as I'm concerned, he said that the gospel will be preached into the ends of the world and then the end will come. Now we know this gospel's been preached in every nation already. He's talking about all the to the last soul that's going to receive and get saved. And then the rapture's going to take place. And woe to those in those days who give suck, for those who breastfeed because he's coming for those babies. And all those six, seven, eight, nine, and ten years old going up too in the rapture. And don't be surprised if the animals go up too. You never know. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but you just never know. My point is this. This is but a vapor, man. I cannot believe I'm as old as I am already. And just yesterday I was born again and or I was I was just turning 18 and you know get my license and all of a sudden, man, James says that this life ain't but a vapor. People are being deceived by all the cares and all the things of this world to fill a void that only God can fill I came to a place in my life where I had to look up and say is there somebody up higher greater than what I'm going through can help me I came to that place where I had to make a decision and that was a place where God was dealing with me and everyone comes to that place sooner or later You hear about family members, somehow they lose their job and their car and they lose everything. All of a sudden they're on the streets and they were doing great. God's dealing with them about something. Same thing with my uncles, or one of my uncles. There comes a fork in the road where God comes to you and says, it's either now or never, I'm dealing with you now. And for sad to say, most choose the other side. They choose to keep doing what they want to do. But I don't know how. I don't know how. I am glad. He got me the way he got me. And I thank him for it. Because I want more of his presence. I want more of his word. I want more of his anointing. His person. His joy. His laughter. The, the life that he gives. The energy. The power. The, every, his character. His love. His, everything that he is. I just want to walk with that person. I just, I just want what he created me for that's what he created us for you know what it's like sitting at the feet of Jesus you want more of it am I right you look at him and say oh my gosh you just want to hang you just want to can he stay a little while Jesus I know your presence is going to dry up here and it's back to the back to life until I behold you again in another dimension of your presence you got to go through that cycle of wait upon the Lord and renew your strength you have to go from glory to glory to mountain to mountain to valley to mountain to valley because we are in this corrupt flesh, we have to crucify it daily. We have to pay the price in the wilderness to see him on the mountaintop. You see, we're limited to his presence, but it's, and one day it'll be his complete full presence. But we won't have to go through that again. We won't have to go through the fiery furnace of affliction to purge this flesh to continue to experience that presence. We'll be able to just walk in it free with no kind of flesh to say it's time to go back through it again and be tested won't that be awesome I'm willing to pay the price and the scripture says the scripture says in Ephesians that I consider our present sufferings not even worthy of comparing to the glory that shall be revealed in us God is coming. Jesus Christ is coming for his elect. About the time of the persecution of the Antichrist. During that time, they'll be eating and drinking and marrying and giving in the marriage. But yet, there's a persecution going on. But not for the ones that are eating and drinking and giving in the marriage because they're taking the mark of the beast. They're living it up. The others who are not taking the mark of the beast are being persecuted.
don't you take the keys out? What? Because I'm doing this. You want to listen to the radio? No. You know, got it, got it word for word, and it's still, I'm still not quite where I need to be. Revelations 13, 7, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. To make war with the saints. That means the saints are still here. That means the saints are still here. Well, Vinny, that, those are the saints that are left. Those are the people who became Christians after the rapture and got saved in the great tribulation. No, I beg to differ. The rapture takes place in the beginning, in the midst of the Great Tribulation. The saints are still here. See? Because when the rapture takes place... The dragon was cast out of heaven. Revelation 12, 6. Revelation chapter 12 is a picture of Jacob's trouble. It's a time of the, uh, the 144,000 recognizing their Messiah, missing the rapture. Because they're rapture, they recognize their Messiah. Revelation 12, 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. You know? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused him before our God day and night. See? The end won't come, the rapture won't take place until... The end won't come until the rapture takes place. And the rapture won't take place until the gospel is preached in all the nations. Why? This scripture confirms it. It's that every soul that's going to be saved is going to be saved. Therefore, there's no need for an accuser of the brethren because there's no more brothers behind because the brothers got raptured. Because look at this. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. The death. What death? The persecution of the Antichrist. Re Revelation chapter 12, verse. I mean, I'm still in chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore, rejoice, you heavens. See? See? See, they're in heaven now. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. In other words, re rejoice to you in heaven, but woe to those of the earth and of the sea. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devils come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. That's when he knows, when the rapture takes place, the devil's going to know he's got a short time. And the dragon was cast out, that old serpent. And the dragon saw, and when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth the man child, which is the church. And because of that, the dragon goes after the remnant of her seed, which isn't the man child. It's the hundred and forty-four thousand. Because you read about that in Revelation chapter twelve, verse one, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven. There's a wonder in heaven concerning what the woman. The woman is Israel. The, the Israel was always the woman. Israel. The first fruits was raptured when Jesus was raptured. The Bible says when he resurrected on high, all those in the grave came up after him when he free, when he set the captives free. They all went with him. A woman clothed with the sun, and this this speaks of the of them recognizing their Messiah, and the moon under her feet, which is the church, 
and upon her head, oh no, she recognizes her Messiah through the fullness of Gentiles, the church. Where does the moon get her light from? The sun. The sun is Jesus Christ. They're recognized, and, that, you know, and then that's what happens. The rapture takes place. The Jews see him gathering the elect in the air and say, wow, he really was the Messiah. They're going to know that it's Christ. Everyone's going to see. See, yeah, the scripture says we're going to be caught up in the twinkle of an eye, but they're going to see Christ in his glory. When Jesus comes to gather his saints, they're going to see him in his glory. I'm convinced of him. They're going to say, let the rocks fall on us and hide us from the one that sits on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb. I'm convinced of it. The Lord has showed me that. And the moon under her feet and upon her... Where did it go? All right, what? Okay. And the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. The stars are the children of Israel, the remnant of her seed, the 144,000 that will receive their Messiah. I've got the whole teaching in Revelation chapter 12. Got it all broken down, but I'm not going to break it down right now. But see, that's what we're here for. I mean, check out my video on Revelation chapter 12, the whole breakdown. Check it out. You'll see it more clearly with more scriptures. But the thing is that we have to preach the gospel before the anti. See, the Antichrist, the beast, false prophet, prematurely just tried to come on the scene. That's why the election was so uh, was so crazy because it was there was something that was trying to come up on the scene prematurely but the restrainer had to take place and the scripture says that that when he comes he'll be restrained until he's revealed in his own time okay when he's released he'll start persecuting a lot of people for not taking the mark of the beast and worshiping his image or receiving the number of his name and a lot of people are going to a lot of people are going to reject a lot of people are going to say this is the devil a lot of people are going to turn to jesus christ it's going to be a big revival in the midst of great persecution i mean if you look at the book of acts what formed their church what formed what formed their church persecution it was a persecuted church that's why they're so powerful look at the church of china they're very powerful because they're persecuted i mean this american church is just like <laughs> Where are the saints, you know? Where's the power of God? Who's got the anointing anymore? You know, everyone's... only reason why people are involved in ministry is because they want their own empire. They need to stop it. Start fasting and praying and manifest the healing power of Jesus. Let us know that you got the power of God for real. You know, show us a real rhema. Show us something deep by the Holy Ghost. I want to sit at the feet of Jesus. Not at something that really sounds good and gets me hyped. I want to sit at the feet of Jesus. I want to feel the Holy Ghost. And too many, too many of them out there, you know, are wanting to have their own ministry and they're preaching and hooping and hollering, talking about I feel the Holy Ghost and all I feel is AC blown. I mean, that's what it is. There's, there's, they don't have the anointing. They have a power. They have a gift to preach, and they're moving in the power of it, which can change the atmosphere. But it's not the presence of the Holy Ghost. I mean, when was the last time that? people really felt the Holy Spirit coming in the atmosphere off of a ministry. Remember back in the days, you had a, there was like three or four churches we can go to and there was a move of the Spirit, Holy Laughter taking place, or something, right? Yeah. There was a, quite a few churches you could go to and you, you would see Jesus there. I can't find them anymore, can you? Well, they're all worldly now. They're all worldly now. Worldly. Wor 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 worldly. <laughs> worldly now. Yeah, they're just... They're going by what the world does. They've let the world come into the churches, the, yeah. and that was what happened in, in what? Corinth? Yeah. Was it, was it Corinthians? Corinthians? Well, yeah, well. Well, when he said that. Come on. Um, they, they, they became carnal? Mm -hmm. When they, they became, became carnal? Car car carnally minded? Carnally minded. Yeah, they had and a similar problem. And they that's were, what's going on today, and that's mm -hmm. why the word says in the last days, it'll be like in the days of Noah, because there's not going to be too many found. See, people think you have to go to a building, a church, yeah. but we are. We are the church. We are. You don't have to do that. And the thing is, is that's what he's coming back yeah. for. You he's know the, coming back for us. He's coming back for the remnant of, uh -huh. of Christ, which is the pure, the ones that aren't spotted. Or the churches are now spotted. So they're really not the church, are they? 
they look like the church, but they're but most they're bringing people, deception. Most people will tell you to stay away from them because they're just carnally minded, all uh, and they're just. And they're even the world corrupt. knows it. Even the world will tell you that yeah. they're not real. Yeah. Did you know that there's six people on our street that are Christians, and you think they'd have a, a be breaking bread together, and they're divided. They're divided. They're not close. See, back in the day, you know, when you saw a brother in the Lord, like, oh my God, another brother. Wow, let's break bread, man. You you would have a good time in the spirit. You'd just be like, man, I'm glad to, I hope to see you again. Because when you have Christ in you and you serve in Christ and you find somebody else, that person who has Christ in them, they're going through something what you're going through. Not to mention, not only can they identify you according to the trials that they're going through, but there's something deposited in them from Christ mm -hmm. that you're both like-minded, that you just want to be around each other because there's a piece of Jesus in that person, the one that you strive for and die for every day. Mm -hmm. Well, that person can help you get a little closer to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, there's two or three gathered in my name. How much more? Yeah. Man, I got a Christian man down the road I'm trying to convince to do a Bible study with, and he don't want to do it because of the vision. Mm -hmm. He don't want to because of a because of his doctrines. He don't want to put down. He's, he's not open-minded to hear anything fresh or learn something different or renew his mind. He's just stuck on something that just ain't refreshing him. And, it's, and the other guys are the they're, same way. They'll be the ones that don't have the oil in their lamp when Jesus comes. See, say that again. They'll be the ones that don't have the oil in their lamp when, when Jesus, Jesus comes. comes. Mm -hmm. That's because they're the ones that they don't feed themselves daily. They they're not hungry. They're, they're their appetite always, isn't there. They're, they're not hungry for the oil. They're not always keeping it, you know, the oil in them. So... When he comes, they'll be left behind because they'll have to go back and get it. They they won't even know. They won't. Yeah. They'll you know, the the ten virgins, five of them had to go back, and get, and then they they wanted, the other ones, oil, remember? Yeah. Uh -huh. and they said we can't give you any of our oil because then we won't have enough. It's like they're lazy. Yeah. If you really look at that scripture, it's like they're lazy. Right. In other words, by the time they go back like, and get give a Give me yours. Give me what you have. Exactly. And that's how they are. Yeah. They'll take your teachings off of Facebook and YouTube. They'll copy everything. They yeah. won't do a Bible study no. off of it and get yeah. additional oil from Jesus. But they'll take no. every last thing you said, change, take your name off, put their name on, and flaunt it like they got it. Yeah. I, I put something on Facebook a long time ago, a couple years ago, and some lady... She said, oh, you gave me my sermon that I have to do Sunday morning. Thank you. May I use it? And I was like, it's, it, yeah, well, you're going to use it anyways, obviously, because you said you found it. And, and but it's almost, did she do it? Right. Where's her testimony? Where's her, you where's know, her getting in, diving into the word and, and getting yeah. it and, Come on. and, you know, getting that meat, mm -hmm. you know, so she can teach it. No, she had to get it. She, they're lazy. And, and, and notice it said by the time they went back and get get their own, it was too late. Well, yeah. They, were that locked, means, they came back and they were locked uh -huh. out. That, that means by the time they start fasting and praying and doing what they should have did from the beginning. Yeah, and it's true. funny because the scripture says it's impossible to renew on the repentance after falling away. It's so funny. You better get it while you got it and keep it and dig for it when, when you caught it. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Let me tell you what. God has been so merciful and graceful to me. So, so many times I've arrogantly, carelessly slipped up and did foolishness. And he's forgiven me. But to completely fall away. And then go after someone's oil and not even try to get right with God. Yeah. Man, I don't try it's to be sad, mean. It's a sad, sad time that we're it living is. in. It's a sad, sad time, but at the same time, it's exciting because Jesus we is, know he's he's coming. He's coming. He's, he's here. Almost he's almost here. at the. He's at the door. Yeah, he's at the door, and he's. He, I mean, I can just see them up there in heaven, getting ready, getting the horses, getting getting, getting everything getting, ready, getting things ready, saying you know. With, but there's so many of them up there that it's going to take. You know, it's going to take a little time for him to get all those. Horses and angels, or whatever get them ready. Saints they've, that they've been preparing. To back. They've been preparing but the table. They've been preparing tell for you, a while. They're now. up there. They're up there. You know, and he's like, it's almost. They're excited. He's, it's almost for finished. their return. But at the same time, they're sad, just like us. Mm -hmm. We're. It's a, it's a sad, sad time down here, but it's excitement. Same thing up there. It's a sad, sad time because they know they got to come. And what is he going to do to the non-believer? To the ones that that 
just well, rejected after, him. Well, after he's the, just gonna right. Well, after the rapture takes place, we go to the marriage supper, and a, a short time after that, we come back to uh, to execute the wrath of the Lamb with Christ on white horses. Mm -hmm. After the Father's wrath is being poured out, you have the Father's wrath, and then you have the mm -hmm. wrath of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. I can break it down, man. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. But it's still for them. You know, he knows yeah. what's going to happen. And they know how many people are going to go to hell. They know. They have it all in the books up there. They it's know. already been written. And they know how many. And it's sad for them. It's like, he weeps. I know he does. I felt it one time, a long time ago. Oh, I he did told too. me, you know, he's, he's sad. These are his children that he created. And he didn't create them for hell. I know it hurt him when once, you know, Satan fell. You know, when he wasn't Satan and he fell. That must have been, you know, even though he knows, the Father knows all things, it's still, I think, it it hurts him. And then he has to kind of just like, you know, so. Yeah. We're getting ready. We are, right now, I'm doing everything I've I, I've always known to do. That walk that I have with him, the, the 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 that has a wine press that pushes out that oil. Right now, I'm trying to do everything I can do now to birth out extra oil. Yeah. I'm starting to eat healthier now. I'm starting to stay extra free. I'm starting trying to watch my mouth more. I'm starting to uh, uh I'm I'm, get, I'm I'm gonna get ready to start doing some heavier fasting too. I'm gonna yeah. get all caffeine and everything that's toxin out of my body, so that way I can fast. Uh, it's it's hard for me to fast long periods of time with caffeine in my system because it does something to my mind. And I'm gonna be be able to go deeper fasting. And I'm gonna have more oil. And um, with that in mind, I will say, um, that's a new journey for us. That we're yeah, on. from glory to glory, that's and a new journey that we're gonna be. We've always pressed for the oil, but there comes that time in your life where you don't. You don't sit on the bench in a backsliding way, but you kind of sit back a little bit and kind of breathe a little bit and kind of just fight the enemy from uh, a reclining couch but until you can catch your breather, but then you get back up and you're stronger and then you and then you're, you come into a deeper dimension of God where you take on a newer maturity than you started out with. You see what I'm saying? You got something? I just remembered we forgot. Oh yeah, I gotta call that in. Oh man, I gotta. Today's Sunday, right? Yeah. Tomorrow's Monday. They're open tomorrow. I, I, I gotta okay. call it in. I just yeah. it just hit me because when we were talking about stuff, yeah. I'm like, I gotta get that out tomorrow. That? I, gotta I, that out tomorrow. I gotta get that out tomorrow. I gotta get that out. I owe the Lord on that, so I gotta get that out tomorrow. Oh yeah, that's a must. Anyways, we have to start doing. This. So, um, we always do, but we're late and we see results and it's not good. But anyways, um, gotta pay your tithe. Um, Make sure you find the right one to tie it to because uh, I don't want to get into that. But we got to keep believing. We got to keep believing in Jesus. I know there are some viewers that, that are listening. You don't say too much, but you sit back and listen and keep believing. Keep pleading the blood of Jesus on your life. Keep trying to repent. Keep trying to stay free from sin and, and, and ask for God's presence. God wants you to ask for his presence. Don't just ask for forgiveness. Ask God to show you his glory. Ask God to fill you with his presence. Ask God for the presence of the, the, the Holy Spirit daily. Talk and, to and the talk Lord. To the Lord. He loves to hear Ask, you. He loves, loves to, to hear you. you. He wants his spirit to come in and help you talk with him. And anybody can talk to God, but not too many people have God talking to them. He will talk to you if you do that. And um, I'm excited. This is an excited time. Well, you know, we got to have ears to hear. Yes. And the thing is, God is quiet. The Holy Spirit is quiet. He's not going to come in with a with a loud, you know, voice. He's going to come in with a quiet, still voice. And that's how I always know it's God. Because I hear it and then I, I have to listen really hard. And it's not with my ears, but it's with my, my heart, with my soul, with my spirit inside of me. I have to really listen. And I know it's God, but I do hear Him. And when I hear Him... I know it's him. And then there has been some times that I've heard him with a shout, like, no, big like a door slamming. So he will do that at times, but most of the time it's a very quiet, still voice. Right. Another key to, ears to hear. Another key to hear the Lord more is when you're in your meditation time, shut off the phone. Sometimes oh, yeah, you may have to turn the phone off because the devil will 
people will be blowing up your phone all of a sudden. Well, that's why it says to go into your closet. Go into your closet. Yeah. You, you don't spoke something in the spirit. You're hearing from God right now. Yeah. That, that's closet. why the Lord said go into the closet. <laughs> go into the quiet place. <laughs> yeah, there's no TVs. There's, there's no, no TV. cell phones. And, there's no and I know children. That's from, there's and I, no... And I know that's from the Holy Ghost because you didn't have no notes. I mean, because the idea is to stop every... I, I challenge you to, you to do this when you're in that secret place. Every thought that comes in, if it has nothing to do with God or anything, every thought that comes in about the bills, about this, about the job, about the workplace, about mm -hmm. just stop it. You know, there's times it takes me 15 minutes to do that, and I mm -hmm. finally get to a place where my so mind is not thinking about nothing, and suddenly my mind is still, and then boom, oh, something okay. begins to take place. Yeah. Yeah. How you doing? Something begins to take place. So, um, so yeah. So there's that that stillness that takes place when your mind, when you finally get to that place where your mind is completely silence. The voice of God can really come in and speak to you, because what's happening is that there's a spiritual battle taking place of a, a spirit in the spirit world, world of demons of spirits in the unseen world, where they're feeding your mind all this stuff, just trying to hinder God speaking through you through that angelic channel, kind of like, kind of like with uh, with uh, David, not David, uh, with Daniel. Remember Daniel, wrestling with the prince of Persia. Mm -hmm. Uh, that prince of Persia was hindering his spirit. But he, he said, he, he said, he said, when he became dumb, a voice spoke to him. Daniel chapter ten. He said, the scripture says, when he became dumb, mm -hmm. a voice spoke to him. He, 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 the Lord began to talk to him. So the Lord don't want to hear how many scriptures you know. He don't want to hear how loud you can pray. Just be quiet. Let him do the talking. Ask them to talk to you. And you know, a lot of times, suddenly things come on our mind and in our spirit, and we think it's us, and we're talking, and we're like, wow, this is, you know, I'm, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't look at it that way. Having no idea that our spirit man, a God, is talking to us. And the way God talks to us is something in your spirit will start talking to God. You see? Your spirit man will start having a conversation with God that you don't know about till all of a sudden, when everything is off your mind, all of a sudden something begins to take place where an idea comes to you and you're like, wow, I didn't realize, I, that's a good idea, I never really thought about it, having no idea that you just God just spoke to you. Because mm -hmm. you're not going to hear a voice coming out of a burning bush like Moses. You're not going to hear an audible voice. Some people have claimed to have, I've heard of audible voice, but let's just be real, God's trying to have some real fellowship with you. And that's what it's all about, man. Will I keep preaching the gospel? I believe I will preach the gospel. I was given uh, many prophetic words, but I gave, I was given this prophetic word and a few different expressions from the Lord himself, from heaven, by a very powerful prophet that I was really close to at one time. The Lord told him that I would always be by the Lord's side. I would always talk to the Lord, even in troubled times, even when I'm slipping and making mistakes. I would always be talking to the Lord. No matter what I go through, even if I do it on purpose, I would always be by his side. God is so full of mercy and grace, not for you to just willfully sin, but you're going to battle with things that you're going to wrestle with as you grow that it's going to cause you to sin and sometimes at times make you look like an original sinner. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm not talking about where you carelessly go out and just sin and not care. I'm talking about where something hits you and you begin to do things and say things that you're not trying to say or do. Do you see what I'm saying? Things you don't really mean to say, but you're going through a, a storm. You gotta be strong and hold up that you gotta hold up that cross and pray and deny yourself and ask God to, to help you. Even Jesus struggled with that. He struggled with his own will. That's how that's that that attack is so powerful. Not on just us, but look at Jesus. He almost didn't go to the cross. 
He said, let this cup pass from me if possible. And then he says, then, then a shift begins to take place. The comforter begins to show up and help him with that infirmity. And he's able to say, not my will be done, but thy will be done. The Holy Spirit will help us, but you have to cry out to him when you're getting attacked by those things that will give him the authority. It's like the referee. You know when you're wrestling, you ever watch the wrestling movies, and, and then you you, you, you you tap your helper, and he comes in, and he helps you, and it takes some weight off you? Mm -hmm. Or the referee comes in and says, all right, and there's mercy. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Yeah. It is worth the battle. Fighting these devils, fighting this flesh, going through all the hell you and I go through, it is worth it. It is worth living a life of sin and selfishness and greed just to live it up for this world. Live in darkness, live for yourself, just to, just to end up in hell for all eternity. It is so much worth it. It doesn't feel like it's worth it, does it, sometimes? Sometimes it doesn't feel like it's worth it. But it, some, but it really is worth it. Because we always get through it. We always come out of it with pure joy, the Holy Ghost, laughter, slain in the Spirit, His presence, His power. How many church services have we had in our car? More than we can count. Folks, I want to encourage you oh, to get back in the faith. We've been married three years. We've been saved a lot longer than we've been married. <laughs> but um, I want you... Many times in our car. We've had church. Yeah, we've had church many times in our car. My wife's saying so. I was. I just want to challenge you. It's worth it. It's worth it. Put down that sin. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. Say, Lord, help me. I'm trying. I slipped up. I just heard a message from Vinny not too long ago that had me repenting and serving you. But now I'm back in the the, the lion's den again, and now I'm slipping and I'm slipping. It's okay. He's with well, you. Is, He's by is, your side. Go back to what he said to the the lady who was caught in adultery. Yeah. He said, where are your accusers now? Exactly. Get up and go sin no right. more. That's what we have to do daily. Yeah. See, there's somebody who's listening to us right now. I just heard a message from me a couple of days ago by the Spirit, and God refreshed you, and you and, mm -hmm. and, and you decided to take on your cross, and all, and you was doing good, and all of a sudden you got attacked so strong that you ended up in your flesh, and, you, and, and, and you're listening to this message, and, and God, and because you're listening to this message, you're like that lady. She still had to come to Jesus, right? She still had to come to him at his feet. And he's saying to you, where are your accusers now? Get back up. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, because <laughs> keep pressing. The thing you is, keep on believing. Nobody has a right to point a finger. Just like they didn't. Nobody had a right to throw a stone. And that's why he said what he said. Let the first one cast a stone that has no sin. Because everybody has it. Even the ones who are pressing for God and like myself and you, even though you're trying to do what I said a couple of nights ago on the video, you still got up and you still kept believing. And even though you got knocked off your horse, you still have to keep going. He still loves you. He still forgives you. The righteous man falls seven times but gets back up. I'm talking to somebody. Keep believing you're just as pure and holy as you was when you decided you was going to get back up and give it another try. Keep believing. <laughs> I don't know who this person is, but I feel a dimension of God's presence coming upon you now. And you haven't even heard this message yet. <laughs> well, well, you are now. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I got my dog just staring at me. And she look at her little Looking paw. at me she's like, with her paw up on the armrest like she's just loving the, the message. She is. She Every is. time I preach, you know, I, I she feels the anointing. She feels the she's peace. She's looking at you, just loving you. She sees Jesus and she says, man, what is that anointing? She sees that peace and she's like, wow. And she's just, the Bible says that the creation is, is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. That tree over there is happy to see me. If we don't cry out, the if rocks will. If we don't will. cry out, the rocks will and cry out. And she knows who Jesus is, don't she? My dog over here, yeah, you know who Jesus is. She knows Jesus. Oh, yeah. So I want to tell you guys, man, be encouraged. There is hope in the cross, and it's the only true hope. And no matter what you go through, it is worth it. It is worth worth it there's nothing that you're gonna go through that god does not forget he remembers every last the bible says that he bottles up every tear he remembers it and he will repay you soon enough <laughs> god bless you and i love you stay strong in the word and reach out to me like and subscribe and pray for us